this is a hand examination, a Bartman hand examination. Uh, uh, it's a clinical case that it usually comes in the board examination. So before you start exam any examination, you have to remember uh, the things that we're doing every time. So you will find a doorway examination. You're having Mr. So-and-so. He has, uh, uh, it's, you are asked kindly to examine your, his hands and report to the examiner about his hand examination. Tamam, fatalga enta doorway information. You knock the door. You come to the patient. Assalamu alaikum. Kif halik akh Muhammad. Ani Dr. Islam. Ani mumtahan lil board. Munkit smahli baad nik han nibi nafhas idek. Tamam? Min baad nik nibi kbas tikshif idek li and akhtar min al kua. Tamam? It's important that you wash your hands and you show the patient that you're washing your, his, your hands. Tamam? First of all, it's important that you use a pillow uh, when you examine the patient's hands and uh, uh, you get a better exposure to the patient or good exposure to the patients. So, Akh uh, Muhammad, it's important also to examine that, uh, to report that the patient is sitting comfortable on the chair. He doesn't look distressed. He doesn't look in pain. This is a very important point that you need to uh, mention. And you need to uh, also to start by inspection. So the hand attitude of the patient, so he has um, uh, putting his hand symmetrically on the pillow. Uh, they are in pronation. I can't see uh, why they are prone. I can't see any uh, deformity, uh, any significant deformity. I can't see any scars. Look carefully between the digits. And uh, I can't see uh, any uh, uh, lumps or humps. I can't see any uh, wasting, especially the inter, inter uh, osseous muscles. I can't see some dilated veins. Uh, and uh, um, you do subination of both wrists. I look very carefully for uh, CTS scars. They're not there. I can see some dilated veins. Thinner and hypothenar look symmetrically in both hands. Uh, the, both hands are flushed. And um, uh, again, I couldn't really appreciate any significant uh, wasting or deformity of both hands and wrist. It's very important that you ask the patient, ask the patient to clench his wrists, his hands, uh, look at the clenching, if they are symmetrical or not. Look at the ulnar styloids. Sometimes you find out that there are some uh, ulnar uh, styloid deformities, especially in Druj, and it's very important that you look to the dorsum of the uh, uh, forearm down to the elbows looking for any rheumatoid nodules. This is another important part that you need to do. Then, it's very important also when we, after we finish look, we need to go to a field part. So the field part, usually you need really to start symmetrical and from one side to the other side. In order not to forget any part of the wrist and hand, you need to start uh, in, in either clockwise or counterclockwise. So we're examining the right wrist. If you have any pain, just you need to inform me and stop me. Okay, so I start at the seam C joint of the thumb. I'm feeling it, there's no pain. Then I feel the snuff box. Okay, then I go to the radial styloid. I feel the Lester tubercle. I feel over the scaphalunate ligament. I don't forget to look to the patient's eyes. I feel at the distal radio ulnar joint. Then I just palpate the ulnar styloid okay then while I'm here I just I don't brunate the uh, the forearm I go distally I feel the fifth metacarpal and uh, sorry the fifth metacarpal the fourth and I feel the third metacarpal I feel the second and the first metacarpals then I go to the MCB joints. This is the first MCB joint. Look at the patient's face when you're palpating it for any pain or swelling. So I'm feeling all the MCB joints. Then I feel the interphalangeal and distal phalangeal joints of the digits. Okay. And the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. Then I ask the patient to subinate his uh, forearm. While he's supinating his forearm, I'll feel the scaphoid tubercle, and I feel the radial pulse, 
which is palpable in here okay and then I feel the FCR it's very important then I feel the FCU and again the ulnar stylo and busy form okay so I finished my field part then I would go to the move part so for the move part I have to examine uh, I've examined the clenching of the wrist but uh, the hand so all uh, digits they can do extension and full flexion uh, so what I'm doing I have to start with the wrist I have to do a quick screening so the patient is having uh, flexion of more than uh, around between 80 and 90 degrees of both wrists and quite symmetrical and he's having extension of around 90 degrees of both wrists okay make sure that elbows are extended so he ha he can do ulnar deviation of around 40 degrees bilaterally and radial deviation best radial deviation radial deviation around 30 to 40 degrees bilaterally and they're quite symmetrical so after I finished uh, uh, those movement of the rest I have to examine for pronation and subination I can have another pin so he has I just I gave him two bends it's very important so using the bends while using bends you can really assess how much so I can assess how much pronation and subination he can do so he can do pronation of around 80 degrees and he can do subination of around 90 degrees bilaterally bilaterally and they're symmetrical okay then I have to go to the digits so so he can do symmetrical uh, adduction and abduction of, of the uh, digits and he can do extension we examined previously that he can do complete flexions uh, then I have to examine for the thumb alone so I'm doing adduction of the thumb abduction of the thumb flexion of the thumb extension of the thumb so I've examined the thumb, you need to examine the thumb alone. It's very important to mention before going to any further, if you have any deformity, you have to uh, 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 describe the deformity very precisely. So what are the common deformities that you can find in the hand and wrist? So if, uh, when you see the deformity either, you name the deformity right away, or you, you, you say, so for example, the deformity of the uh, thumb, or button air deformity. So if you have a button air deformity, so it's an extension of the MCB joint, flexion of interphalangeal joint, and extension of the DIB joint. So this is a button air deformity. If you have a swan neck deformity, so it's extension of the interphalangeal and flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint. So this is a, a swan neck deformity. So they are quite deformity, they're very important that you need to describe the deformity. Also, don't forget to look for any bands, especially in tubitrogen contractures, uh, especially in the palm of the hand. Okay, now, after we finished with movement, now we have to uh, go for the functional uh, part of the, uh, the hand. So what hands can do? So first of all, grip. So he can do a very good grip. Then I have to do squeeze test. So he can do a very good squeeze. Then uh, uh, I ask him to do this way. This is a hook test. He can do a very good hook. Then I have to examine for uh, a tripod. Yes. Yes, hold it. Yes, this is a tripod. A tripod. Then I have to ask him for a bench grip holding a key. Exactly, he can hold the key. This is a bench grip. Then I have to ask him to pick up the coin and take it. Okay, so uh, this is a coin grip that I have to examine as well. Okay, after I examine those fine function or fine movements of the hand, then I have to go to the special test. So there are special tests for the rest, special tests for the hands. For starting with the special test of the rest, be all the time systematic. First of all, I have to examine for Dibitrin's contractures. For Dibitrin's contractures, there are uh, tenosynovitis of the extensor tendons of the thumb. So what I'm doing, I have asked, I ask the patient to flex his thumb and bench on the thumb, and I do under deviation of the thumb and look at the patient's face 
uh, usually this is a painful procedure of division of the uh, decurvent synovitis, sorry, decurvent synovitis is there. Then I have to do uh, Watson Crick test for scaphoid waist fracture or scaphoid I just uh, put my finger on the uh, uh, scaphoid tubercle and I do ulnar and radial deviation. Positive test will be pain and clicking. Okay? This is Watson Crick test for the scaphoid. Then I have to do scaphoid ligament uh, uh, test. I just palpate between, just like palotment. I feel for any movement between both sides. I have to compare it to the other side to examine how much movement is there between the scaphoid Then I, I, I do a ballotment test between lunotriquitral. I just pinch the lunate with uh, right side and the triquitral with the left side, and I do ballotment test. Okay, this is for lunotriquitral. Then I do Bayano test for distal radio ulnar joint, druge. I just hold the radius and the distal part of the ulna, and I move them on either sides, I have to examine bilaterally, especially with patients with hypermobility. This is a Bayano test for the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, distal radio ulnar joint. Then I have to do TFCC testing by uh, uh, ulnar impaction, uh, relax. Yes, I have to impact the ulna, I move it up and down, looking at the patient, looking for any pain, if he has any pain with the ulnar impaction. This signifies uh, this signifies uh, TFCC injuries. Okay, so I finished the special tests of the uh, rest. I go distally to examine to do special tests of the hand. So the first thing that you need, you, you don't need to forget the grind tests. So a grind test is the first CMC joint. You just hold the CMC joint and grind it in this way. Look at the patient face. It's positive with patients of, uh, with, uh, uh, positive with patients with uh, CMC arthritis, okay? Going distally, so at the part of the hand, I have to do uh, what we call Houston, uh, Houston table test. So the Houston table test for Dubitrin's contractures, I ask the patient, uh, uh, can I have my laptop? Yes, exactly. So I ask the patient to put his hand on a rigid table. Yes, exactly. So usually, if he has a Dupuytren's contractures, contractures, he will not be able to put the hand completely on the uh, rigid table. It will be just tracing on either parts where the bands are there. Okay, so this is a Houston table test for the uh, for the uh, Dupuytren's contractures. Then, when we go distally, we have the Allen's test. So the Allen's test usually for uh, uh, botanary deformity. So in, in Allen's test, what we do, we hold the uh, BIB joint and flexion, and severe flexion, yeah, we, in 90 degrees of flexion, and I ask the patient to extend the interphalangeal joint. Extend it, please. So when he extended, I feel the power, and the patient will not be able to extend his distal interphalangeal joint, uh, and it will be very difficult to extend the distal interphalangeal joint. So there's no power. No, he's not extending. Extend powerfully, mm -hmm. yes? Like, shuf. he's extending the interphalangeal joint strongly, but the interphalangeal joint is supple. Tamam? So this means that his central slip is intact. So if the central slip is torn, so the patient will have weakness of extending the interphalangeal joint while his, uh, all the power and the extension will be deviated to the distal interphalangeal joint. The nasal you the buttoner and swan, uh, the buttoner deformity and central slip injury, they would have very strong, they would not have a supple inter, uh, distal interphalangeal joint, DIB joint, okay? Then we go to the banal test. So the banal test, the idea of banal test is uh, to examine between intrinsic and extrinsic tightness. So what we do in the banal test, usually we uh, flex the MCB joint in this way, and we try to flex the interphalangeal joint. So if the interphalangeal joint doesn't flex, that means we have extrinsic tightness. What I mean extrinsic? The extrinsic, the extensor digitorum communis. Okay, so it's tight. Then I repeat the test while the MCB joint is extended and I ask the patient to, or I try to flex the interphalangeal joint. 
If it doesn't flex, that, be, that means that the patient is having intrinsic tightness, and this is the, uh, should be the intrinsic muscles like the lumbricals are quite tight. This is very important. I uh, usually uh, finish my examination by examining the neurovascular examination, examining the elbow, and I do functional assessment of the hand by doing a grip uh, testing. This is examination of the hand. Thank you very much for your attention.